I just got let out of work early because of the rain. Hair's still a little bit wet. And about 20 minutes before the rain came and ran us off the job site, I watched this video by Mr. MB3 from four days ago. Apparently I missed it. You see that it says rolling blackouts and that it's got the lightning bolts all over. That's the thumbnail. And in that video, <clears throat> he shows that there's uh, fires all over Idaho. In his words, from the southern border of Idaho, which is the northern border of Utah, clear up to Oregon and into Canada, whatever province of Canada he referred to. He even said the number of them that's in Canada, like 130 of them in Canada. I don't know if he gave the number of all of those that are in Idaho, but he made a map. He said he had made a map showing you all of the wildfires all throughout Idaho. And then in Oregon, they're shutting down the power because of up to 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Now, if the people at work knew what I know, which I've tried to share with them, but they don't seem too receptive, they would be a lot more appreciative of this rain. And I've said for a while now that here in Utah, considering the circumstances, we're getting perfect weather. Every day at 3 o'clock, the clouds roll in, and 70% of the time, they bring a little rain. <clears throat> Mr. MB3 also showed the hurricane that's going along California that's even bringing rain, and or cl at least clouds, if not rain, clear over to Arizona. He went out with his own camera and showed you the clouds in the sky over his house, where he lives in Arizona, and showed that this hurricane might be bringing in some water that would help with the fires, and that it's going to do a U-turn and come back here in another three days, three or four days which is about today, because this video is from four days ago. So engineered weather helps with the fires to suppress the fires. That's why I say if the people at work knew what I know, they would be a lot more appreciative of this rain, because it suppresses the fires. Because what I've ascertained, I don't know at all, but from the guesses that I have, these fires whip up at the same time as the wind. Like there's a hole in the magnetic field as Skywatch Media has explained, a fluctuation in the magnetic field creates a surge of ground current electricity that comes up through the trees. And these fires happen simultaneously with wind. So what's happening in California and Oregon, the reason they're shutting off the power is because they know that these fires coincide with the lightning MB3 shows here on the rolling blackouts. These rolling blackouts coincide with lightning and fire. And it's not that the wind's blowing down the power poles and starting the, light, uh, starting the fires. We've discerned that a long time ago. It's something more like when there's a hole in the magnetic field that they can detect, they bring in the engineered weather to try and suppress the fires that are going to happen because at the same time that that surge of ground current happens, a wind happens simultaneously. So the fires that it does start spread across the ground much easier. So about 20 minutes before the rain hit, I had watched this video by Mr. MB3 that shows a map of all the fires all throughout Idaho, clear up in through Oregon and up to Canada. He even gave a number, a hundred and some odd in the Canadian province. I don't know why he didn't give a number of all the fires in Oregon and Idaho. He may have. He also covers all the fires in California and shows you that there's this hurricane rolling through there and in his own words, it might bring some water that would help with the fires. Oregon Electrical Utilities warns of power outages to prevent wildfires, including Portland's West Hills. So they acknowledge they're shutting off the power to prevent wildfires. Up to 50 mile an hour gusts is what's expected, according to this report. Up to 50 mile an hour gusts never started wildfires before. If you're new to this channel, this is news to you. If you've been here a while, this isn't news to you. They shut off the power, the electricity, to prevent wildfires in, through, by their own admission for winds that are up to 50 miles an hour. We've had winds all throughout history. We never shut off the power to prevent wildfires previously because, like I said, it's something more like a hole in the magnetic field, creates this surge of ground, ground current that creates the fires and simultaneously creates wind, so they engineer some rain or snow like we saw in Boulder, Colorado. Massive fires hit and an hour later the snow fell and it's falling on top of smoldering houses. <clears throat> 
When I speak of the knowledge about plasma fire, or when I say the trees burning from the inside, that also includes the houses burning to the ground while the trees around them remain standing. That's what plasma fire does when it hits an urban area. Burns the houses to the ground, leaves the trees standing. And the drone footage that flies over these houses can see the rebar that was once encased in concrete just prior to the fire. These types of fires remove the concrete from the rebar through some sort of vibrational frequency, I believe. I don't think it's because they hit such high temperatures that the concrete falls off of the rebar. I think it's a vibrational thing, something to do with the microwaves. And on cars, where it hits the cars, melts the engine blocks, the door handles, and the glass. So when I say plasma fire or trees burning from the inside, it includes all that stuff I just described. That's what happens when plasma fire hits uh, the wilderness, burns the trees from the inside. When it hits an urban area, burns the houses to the ground and leaves the trees standing and melts the engine blocks, the door handles, the rims of the cars, and the glass. And when I speak of knowledge of plasma fire, it also includes the fact that this dismantles. Any one of your friends that think, thinks they know something, they don't. Because everything that they think they know came from these authorities and these institutions. And plasma fire, to the degree that I've documented it over the past four years, proves the authorities and those institutions are not telling you about plasma fire. They're telling you other stories, like we're shutting down the power. They're telling you part of it. We're shutting down the power to prevent wildfires. But they don't tell you the whole story. So plasma fire rewrites your understanding of your whole worldview and dismantles every angle of your worldview. From the media, it's not telling you, to the fire departments, the police departments, politicians, institutions of higher education, you name it. All of them are in on a lie of omission, leaving out the truth which I have delivered over the past four years. So when I say the knowledge of plasma fire, that also includes everything about your worldview that just goes out the window. Because everything about your worldview came from those same institutions that aren't telling you anything about this. So I'm going to, this is going to be a prelude to a video where I'll need to switch the camera around so I can film phone to phone and show you some of this artwork that I purchased on Sunday. And the bottom line is this horned god seems to have been part of my learning process the whole time. Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. This is a, this is from a video that I titled, The Struggle is Real and So is Christ. And while I'm on it, this horned god thing, I'm not just tagging along to narratives that James True is laying down. It seems that we're tapped into the same spirit. Long before he said anything in his most recent videos about the Ark of Bothmet and Noah, I forget what he titled the one about Noah, when he talks about the uh, Ron Jeremy of Meerkats, by the way, he says Jeffy is the gay one. Thanks, pal. I mentioned that this was a storyline that I had received a couple weeks ago when I made a video titled, regarding the song, I made a pilgrimage to save this human race. I'll stop the world and melt with you. When I made that video, I told you I was getting my cup filled right now. But after I've received more of what I've already received, we're going to talk about this social engineering program and sexual selection combined with evolutionary psychology and evolutionary sociology. And I just left it at that because I hadn't received any more of the details and I still wasn't sure how to put it into words. But in my last video or the one before that, where I broke it all down and said it's going to be like uh, orgy porgy Ford fun, take the girls and make them one. A breeding program from the Brave New World, the, the, the book Brave New World. I told you that was coming before James ever mentioned anything about the Ark and the Ron Jeremy of Meerkats. Likewise, with this horned god business, I'm going to show you that this horned god has been part of my learning curve since the very beginning. And at the very beginning, I was like, these evil bastards here in Park City, they're worshiping some sort of horned god. And because they don't come right out and say it, it must be evil. So we're going to get around to that. And uh, while I'm at it, let me just grab some of this artwork that I purchased. 
over the weekend on Sunday. And where where is come on, where's the one that's called Weathering the Storm? Here we go. Weathering the Storm. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the things in here. You see all that lightning? That's the storm we're going through right now. You see this red planetary celestial object? That's what Rap the News has been talking about saying you can see lava coming off this thing. Final Days, YouTube channel, recently put out a video after having not put out one for a while. And she shows things that you can see on the FAA weather cams with giant craters in them, like planets that are floating around in our atmosphere. This painting is what made me purchase some of the other guy's work, which includes these horned god images. I'll show you some other work too by another uh, artist that was there. This one's called The Beholder. This one with the owl. I had a personal first-hand experience with an owl Monday night. While I was taking my walk, that I always do, and I was tapped way into the spirit, feeling real good. An owl comes along and swoops, so much so that I ducked. And it came right up and 10 feet above my head, flapped its wings about 10 times, and then swooped the other way and landed on a post. And right as it lands on a post, I said, was that a face-to-face? -face? Out loud. Because God told me I'm going to have a face-to-face -face meeting just before everyone else gets to meet God. And that's what James True is telling you, that we're about to meet God. I broke this down in a previous video about how this is a consciousness filtration, the uh, exodus melanin, the people with more melanin and they refuse to see the fucking trees burning on the inside all around them. They're not going to be able to handle seeing God. So they're given their opportunity to exit stage left before it turns into a world they're not going to fit into because they cannot expand their consciousness to the point where they can wrap their mind around what's going down. You need to lose your grip on reality in order to grasp what's coming. So when this owl swooped down on me and I ducked it first, God told me, when you first see a startling will be a natural thing. But after that, the startle will go away. And because we've had this four year development of our relationship that goes clear back to Greg Braden 20 some odd years ago being the bridge that walks between worlds, we are in that zero point described by Greg Braden. But God told me we'd have a face-to-face -face just before everyone else gets their chance to meet God in order that I will kind of see it coming and get a little heads up and be able to operate accordingly. Yeah, this is my bro. We're like this. We've been hanging out for a while. And that in that face-to-face, -face, I'll be startled at first. There's no way around that. Even when your loved one, your friend or family member comes around the corner, you, whoa, and you can be startled by them. But once you see that, oh, it's just you, you're not afraid. You don't have fear. So when this owl swooped me, I was startled. And then it flaps 10 feet above my head, about 10 times, swoops down and lands on a pole. I said, was that a face-to-face? -face? I said that out loud. It then came back and did it at least two more times, maybe three, at least two more times. So a total of three times. It landed on a pole over there. And I crouched down so I could raise the, the bird up in the, above the skyline to be able to see the outline of the silhouette because it was perched on a post that was just below the horizon line. And I crouched down to be able to see the bird on the post. It comes down, swoops above my head about 10 feet, flaps its wings 10 times, 10 feet above my head. And I'm sitting here watching it and it flies off and then it comes back and does the same thing a third time right above me. So I've now had personal experience that directly relates to this horned god, the serpent and the owl. Three things which the general public has this Pavlovian operant conditioning. Pavlov's dog they trained to salivate to the sound of a bell. And general public has been trained to tremble with fear that has been associated with these three symbols. 
The way they got Pavlov's dog to do it, they call it operant conditioning. Through the operation, repeated association, they give him food and ring a bell, and give him food and ring a bell, and give him food and ring a bell. And then eventually, all they got to do is ring the bell, and the dog starts salivating as if food is about to happen. They have associated the owl, horn man bad, and the serpent, evil. So many times with the general public to train you just like the dog salivates to the sound of the bell, you start trembling with fear to the image of the owl, anything with horns, and anything serpent-related or dragon. So, we're going to go over some of that artwork here in the next video, once I turn the camera around. On it, one of my very first plasma fire pieces looks exactly like the Bothmet. And I said so in these previous videos. It looks so much like the Bothmet that when I took it to Justin, who runs formerly known as Pivotal Suspension Seating and Design Ideas, now JRT Cabinetry, he named it after his Jack Russell Terrier, JRT. Justin uh, and his family know me since I was 17. And when I took this piece in, he said, that looks like that goat god thing that they worship. I said, yeah, the Bothmet. He says, what? The Baphomet, that's what they call that. Oh, so not even knowing the term Baphomet, he saw this face mask of a plasma fire piece and said, that looks like that goat god thing that they worship. That's how specifically this mask that I had, that I will show you the videos of, and I say in the videos that this is a mask. You could strap it to the inside of a hard hat, remove the hard shell of a hard hat, where it's just the straps and the little plastic band, attach this face mask to the front and a couple extra horns that would attach to the side and you could use it as a Halloween mask if you dare. These are in my previous videos. So, along with some of this other stuff that I just showed you that I filmed on Main Street in Park City and show you the horns all over and say these people are worshiping some sort of horned god. It became obvious to me very quickly, but at the time, I was still associating anything that I didn't understand with fear. And so I went through a learning curve that led me to the point where I am now, where I know I'm something more like the character on Childhood's End, who is the ambassador between humanity and the gods. And when the gods, after floating around in the sky for a few years, land at the appointed time and place because they've made an appointment with the people, to make an appearance, when they get off the ship, they look exactly like what we've been trained to see as the devil. With the horns and the red skin, the whole thing. MB3 keeps showing you more and more UFO sightings, triangle craft. So those triangle craft that I filmed, that I showed you, that I captured through that Santilli telescope, are the same thing MB3 keeps showing you over and over and increasingly, incrementally more and more, more often. We're not just getting better at capturing them. They're not just get, getting worse at cloaking themselves. They are trying to incrementally show themselves so by the time the big show goes down, more people are ready, willing, and able to accept and be still and know that I am God. September 23rd or 24th, maybe something big happening. Yesterday, I don't even know what the buzz is about this date. All I know is I got three different reports about September 24th yesterday. The first one came from AWOL Nation in a video that he titled 9-23-2022, and it's only about 10 seconds long, where he says, I don't remember, I don't have a first memory, I have a group of memories, and I don't remember which one is first, but I'm glad that I do remember my dad teaching me to ride a bike. And that's all that he says. That's the end of the video, and it's titled 9-23-2022. That was the first one I came across hearing about this date. Now, that's pretty weird. We're going to talk about AWOL a little more here in a second, and someone mentioned in the comments section they think he's like Army Intelligence, ex-military. And that would make sense because he is an insider's insider. I'm going to go over a list of songs that many of you have heard me go over before, but putting them all on a list brings it into clear focus that he knows what's going on. Just like that painting, Weathering the Storm, 
is showing you what's happening all around us right now and what is still yet to come. So does AWOL's songs. And the muse spirit that exists within the music also exists within the art, like in an art museum. Same spirit. So the next thing I heard about 923, most people are saying 924, April 24, uh, September 24th, was from Marfugel News where he puts out a video titled, Everyone Will Remember Where They Were on 924-22. And his is pretty much a debunking video saying, okay guys, I tracked this down, found out where it came from. It was this German official that was... At first, he was talking about September 11th, and then he started talking about the invasion of Ukraine. And then he said, September 24th will be a day that everyone remembers where they were on that day. But he must have just misspoken while he was thinking about September 11th, referring to the invasion of Ukraine that actually happened on February 24th because he segued from talking about 9-11, maybe it was on at a 9-11 memorial, and he was equating the invasion of Ukraine to 9-11. And so he said, instead of on February 24th, everyone will remember where they were on that day that Russia invaded Ukraine, he accidentally misspoke and said September 24th. I don't know if Marfugel even believes that. But there is an association there of memory where AWOL Nation put out this video saying, my first memories, my original childhood memories, childhood's end. My original childhood memories, I don't have a single first one. I have a group of memories and I'm, I'm really glad that I remember my father taught me how to ride a bike. Relating to what Marfugel News says that this whole September 24th date comes from, he says there's also going to be a, a railway strike and the nurses are going on strike that day. But it just all stems from this German official that misspoke when he said that everyone will remember where they were on that day, like 9-11. There's some problems with that idea. No one here remembers where they were on February 24th when Russia invaded Ukraine. Maybe the locals in Ukraine do, but I've seen video coming out of Ukraine. And it looks like they're going about business as usual in most of the places around there. So I don't know if anything's coming September 24th. But when AWOL Nation puts stuff out, that either means A, AWOL Nation is a truther and right at the leading cutting edge of hearing the latest rumor before I've even heard about it, creating a video around it, talking about his first memories that... And that's what the German official said, that everyone will remember where they were on that day. But Marf says he misspoke. He didn't mean September 24th. He meant February 24th when Russia invaded Ukraine. And he just happened to previously be talking about 9-11. So he said September 24th. Likewise, last night I was listening to Laura Eisenhower. And she just blurbed it out real quick. And she said, and all the stuff about September 24th. That's all I've heard about it is those three mentions. Apparently, there's a lot of buzz and rumor going on about September 24th. But when AWOL puts out this notification, a very cryptic video, I will include linked in the description a song called Windows, one you guys haven't heard me mention yet by AWOL Nation. That says, part of the chorus is, I can't believe this is really happening. And I am aware, and I don't care. I can't believe this is really happening. Does anybody really know which way the wind blows? But those lyrics, I'm aware, and I don't care, and people screaming, I can't believe this is really happening, relate to AWOL's deep knowledge that he has embedded in many of his songs that are provably related to the story that I'm telling as it's happening and as we're going through it. Those songs include Wake Up, Burn It Down, Guilty Filthy Soul, Soul Wars, Sail, This Is How an Angel Cries, Kill Your Heroes, This Kid's Not Alright, Run, Like People Like Plastic, Slam on the album 